this morning we're talking about Haggai's call for faithful service. Haggai's call for faithful service. And he's one of the many prophets that we have in the Old Testament. And he is uh, what they would call a minor prophet. Not that his ministry, there's nothing minor about it just because it's a smaller book. It's really just that simple. Um, just because of the length of his book and his book is five chapters in, in length, and each chapter is a warning, is a, is, is, a, is a sermon, is an admonishing to the children of Israel what they need to do. A little more background history, the children of uh, uh, Israel had just came out of captivity. Being in captivity for 70 years, God commanded them once they came out of captivity to rebuild his temple. Something happened laid the foundation and they did face some oppositions from others however specifically with today's lessons the biggest thing that kept them from um, completing what God had asked them to do was simply themselves they couldn't blame the devil they couldn't blame the enemies it was because of their life so we're going to take a look at it today and see what happens when we disobey the word of God. But even in that, let's pay attention to God's faithfulness to his people. And then we're going to bring it to the New Testament to us today and how it applies to us today. So it starts Haggai uh, verse one, cha uh, chapter 1, verse 1, in the second year of King Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Shentiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest, saying, Thus speaketh the word of hosts, thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Let's go back to verse 2. And this is a contradiction into what they're saying. Because the Lord told them to build. But then the people have decided that the time hasn't come. This was their first mistake. If God tells us or commands us to do something, it's, it's not a request. It's not something to ponder. It is a command. And we think about when we uh, we were looking at um, Abraham in earlier lessons, and you look at like an Abraham and a Moses, every time God called to them, those men said, here am I. Isaiah, when he called to them, here am I. If we have any response to God's commands, that should it, all it should be. All it should be. Here am I. Here am I. Use me, Lord. And this is something that they failed to do. They, they said the time hasn't come. So in verse 4 it says, uh, this is Haggai talking by way of the Lord. It is time for ye, O ye, to dwell in, in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste. So God's asking, my house lays waste, but you got these remodeled homes. Mm. Verse 5 Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts Consider your ways And, 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 and uh, basically this in layman's terms is saying Set your heart upon your ways Take a look at it This is something we need to do every day as children of God And this is something you think about our current situation in the world Not just America it's time for us to consider our ways. And so verse 6 says, Have you sown, ye have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. You clothe, but there is no warmth. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it in a bag, 
with holes. So now, this is the consequence in the delay of not being obedient to the word of God. So when it comes to their fields, you planted a lot of crops, but there's no harvest. You're constantly eating, eating good, but it's, it's never enough. Then he goes on to talk about you drinking, but you're still thirsty. You got clothes on your body, yet there's no one. This sounds like, and then most of all, you, 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 you're making money, but you're not retaining anything. And he uses the illustration, it's like putting it in a bag with holes in it. It goes in one end and out the other. And in today's standards we talk about, the ends ain't meeting, y'all. And this is the consequence to being disobedient to God's commands. And it's sad when we think about what's going on today. Look how money's being thrown around. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. But it's still not enough. Not enough. Right. Foods are in abundance. We give away food. Yeah. We give assistance to get food. It's still not enough. Everybody's closet is overloaded. Yeah. It's still not enough. And then the money we make from the wages we make on our jobs, still not enough. And then in verse 7, for the second time, as in verse 5, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. We got to take a step back and look at it. What are we doing? Why ain't things working? I go to work faithfully. I'm tired of faithful. I'm giving. I'm on this board, that board. I'm, 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 I'm doing all this different stuff. And yet, I'm still lacking. Go back. Especially for the Israelites. It's cool that you're doing all this stuff, but it don't make no difference. Why? Because you disobeyed the command I gave you. He kept his word. He told him, you're going to be in captivity for 70 years. But then I'm going to bring you out. He fixed the heart of these pagan kings. That they didn't come out empty handed. That they came out with the, the materials and everything they needed. To do what God commanded them to do. But yet. His temple still laid in waste. Let's go further back with the history of the children of Israel. They were in cat, uh, slavery in Egypt for over 400 years, right? But then they finally got brought them out. And once again, the Egyptians gave them clothes and, and, and gold and all these different things. And they, their goal when they came out of there was to worship God. And the one thing he set them free to do, they didn't do. And as a result, a trip that should have took less than two weeks took 40 years. We got to consider our way. Look at what's going on right now. We've been laboring in this thing almost two and a half years. And everybody wondering when is when when we want to stop wearing these masks. When is this gonna happen? When is this gonna happen? Y'all, I truly believe, as in the lesson, the Lord is telling us we need to consider our ways. We asking God to move, but we won't move on his commandments. We're asking him to contradict one of his main attributes of being a just God. 
We've had it good for so long, like the children of Israel, that we've got so comfortable and so lax in our obedience, and now we're suffering. And then we have the younger generation looking at us, and we're trying to quote scriptures to them and tell them what they need to do, and they're looking at us like, please. You live it and I'll do it. It's time for us to consider our ways. Verse 8, go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, saith the Lord. Now check this out. When they came out of captivity, the king made sure they had all the supplies. But now, because of their disobedience, they got to go up and harvest the supplies themselves. Yeah. It's amazing how God always provides for us when we need it and how we need it. But because we're so self-centered, we don't even get to enjoy the blessing. Only to come back around and when we decide we want to be obedient, there's an even heavier price for us to pay. God has supplied them with everything they need. But because of their disobedience, now they got to go harvest the materials themselves. Verse 9. You looked for much, and lo, it came to look. And when you brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of my house that is in waste. He run every man unto his own house. And, and, and God's letting them know that that's me. I'm the reason why stuff's not working out for me. Why? Because you're disobedient to me. You chose to cater to yourself first instead of being obedient to me. And this is the sad part about it. This is why we should really take our times as we study the word of God and we see the children of Israel, they're an excellent example of how to be a good child to our Heavenly Father. Really are. God gave them everything. And it had nothing to do with who they are. It just was because God is who He is. And how He took an insignificant people and made them significant because he chose them to be the priests, to be the, the, the leaders in this sinful world, to tell them about their Heavenly Father. However, they ended up blending in. When you're a child of God, you don't blend in. No, you're right. No, you're right. You can't. Because everything the world says contradicts what's in the Word of God. So you can't blend in. There's a difference. However, when they got out of captivity, they were more adamant about building their own. You get in a terrible rat race and a terrible cycle when you call yourself trying to catch up. It is what it is. Seven years of captivity. But what we should have been focused on it's how God set us up for our present and our future. It's a beautiful thing to really understand what a blessing is. God even took care of them in their captivity. But he fixed it so once you come out of captivity, I'm going to restore you. Now, of course, it ain't going to be the same temple that Solomon built. But the main thing of it is it's going to be a place where you can come worship and be in my presence. That's the main thing. They didn't have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit on every believer like we enjoy now. Amen. Amen. So they had to have a central location where they can come and be in the presence of God. This is the significance of the temple. So you can come and be in the presence of your Heavenly Father. 
But that didn't resonate. Instead, they were more adamant about taking care of their personal homes. And that's why he said these sealed houses, this beautiful woodwork, but let the temple lay in waste. But then they got there back in this vicious cycle. What happened? Everything you do comes to nothing. Why? Because you left out the main ingredient. Have you ever had a recipe for something? Mm -hmm. And you put it together? And you follow the instructions? Well, let me speak for myself. And I was going through it. I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking it don't take all that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Been there. Or I, I looked in the, the, the cabinet, and that particular season wasn't in there, so I figured I could skip on that. And it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Only for the finished product. I didn't want it, let alone serve it to anybody else. The same thing is with our relationship with God. You can't skip on your obedience to Him. And that's what the Israelites did. They checked many of the boxes, but they left out the main ingredient. They were commanded to rebuild the temple of God. It was central to their worship in those days. And the one thing God asked them to do when they came out of captivity, they didn't do it. And as a result, in a vicious cycle. Vicious cycle. It's sad to say that we do a lot of this now. We pick and choose the things we want to apply to our lives from the gospel. And as a result, we find ourselves in a vicious cycle. Verse 10, Therefore the heaven over you is saved from dew, and the earth is saved from her fruit. Verse 11, And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of their hands. So God is showing in his sovereignty. I stop it. I stop it. This is powerful. God is showing not only his faithfulness, he's showing his grace into allowing Haggai to even minister to him. Because we've seen how God got down in the Old Testament. Several people lost their lives with disobeying, disobeying God. But in His grace, He issued these prophets to come minister to them. Why? Because He's building up to something short. What is He building up to? It's going to be short. It's going to be 400 years of silence. And then next, you're going to have John the Baptist. And coming right after him is Jesus Christ. See, He set this thing up. What we're going through right now, He's setting this thing up. But what's he setting it up for? First of all, for the rapture of his church. Yeah. He's coming. Then he's going to have his second coming here on earth to set all his affairs in order. There's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. That's why we need to start considering our ways. We need to do a self-examination. Where am I at? we Y'all, do y'all realize we're literally halfway through 2022? Yes, we are. Third year dealing with this COVID. Civil unrest. Everything that is negative is being glorified now. We as the church need to stand firm in our beliefs. It is hurtful. It's hard when we've lost some loved ones. There's turmoil in some of our houses, whether it be health, finance, whatever. Everybody's going through. But we have that hope, y'all. Yes, sir. We got to stay the course. So now what I want to do is take a look at the New Testament and see what, as, as New Testament believers, what we should be doing. First and foremost, we have one priority. And it's in the Sermon on the Mount. 
Matthew 6, 33. As a child of God today, with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's our number one priority as a child of God today. We talked about Haggai and Israel, what God commanded them to do. Now we're going to bring it to the New Testament and us today. And we're still under the same team because thing because Haggai's calling them back to faithful service. How can you be faithful in your walk with Christ? Make your number one priority on a daily basis to seek God, seek God. Right. His kingdom first and His righteousness. And then that laundry list yeah. that we have, right. according to His will, it'll be added unto you. Thank you That's the number one priority. Then you think about it. Let's go on some more. Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. What's something else we need to do when it comes to love? When it comes to love, it says in verse 34, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And this is Jesus speaking. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. That is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 40. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We're going through this because we're talking about being faithful. If you want to be faithful today, Matthew 6, 33, make your first priority to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Amen. And then all these things you pray and you, all these different things that you seek, They'll be added unto you. But then also you need to check. Where's your love at? All the commandments were hung on these two. You love God with everything. And you love your neighbors. If you practice these two, you're not going to steal. You're not going to fornicate. You're not going to bear false witness. None of that. Why? Because you love God and you love your neighbors. Amen. 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 Now when it comes to forgiveness, because this we're talking about being faithful to God. And this is what's in the Word of God. 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness forgiveness but we got to go back to Matthew and we're going we're going to go through some scriptures because this is Sunday school amen and it's about learning it's about making it and applying it to our lives so if you go back to Matthew 6 after the model prayer, you do know this is the model prayer, not the Lord's prayer. The reason why it can't be the Lord's prayer because the Lord does not need to ask for forgiveness. Amen. Why? Because there was no sin in him. The disciples came to him and asked him to teach him how to pray. Amen. And so he gave them a model to pray after. The Lord's prayer is in John 17. When Jesus prayed to his Father, he started out glorifying me with the glory I had before the beginning yes. of this world. Yes. That's the Lord's Prayer. So, at the end of the model prayer, in verse 14, we're talking about forgiveness. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Verse 15, but if ye do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. So we, we're talking about forgiveness. But we got, it's my duty to give you the, the full spectrum of forgiveness. God is faithful and just to cleanse us and forgive us of all unrighteousness. However, 
When you go to Matthews in the Sermon of the Mount, it's telling you that your forgiveness is hinged upon how you forgive your brothers. Which goes back to the two greatest commandments. To love God with everything and to love your neighbor as yourself. You see how the scriptures are all connected. You want to be faithful. You want to understand what the will of God is. Start applying and obeying his word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's right there. Right there. And specifically, being under grace. In the New Testament, the Gospels and the Epistles shows us exactly how to live this life and to be faithful to Him and to each other. Yeah. Now, let's take a look when it comes to prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 simply tells us to pray without ceasing. Then, if you turn to Philippians 4, 6 and 7, Paul expounds on prayer a little bit more. And I love it because whatever you need is truly in the Word of God. Amen. It leaves you with no mystery. Amen. Especially if you apply it. Philippians chapter 4. Starting in verse 6, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplications, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And this is the result. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. So we're look, what we looked at so far, number one priority, how we're supposed to love, forgiveness, and prayer. And now, <laughs> we're going to talk something about that we really don't want to talk about. In the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 30, um, um, 33, the B portion of that Versus in this world, you're going to have tribulation. Uh -huh. yeah. But be of good cheer, okay. for I have overcome the world. Right now, when you agree, we're experiencing some tribulation. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're, we, 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 we are. We've been rattled. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. But Jesus let us know, I've overcome the world. I've overcome it. And I want to go a step further with overcoming the world. Turn to 1 John 5. 1 John 5. Because these are some scriptures we need to look at more and more as we get into these last days. So, <clears throat> 1 John chapter 5, and we'll start with verse 4. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Did y'all hear that? Amen. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Your faith that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's how you overcome this world. Whatever you're going through right now, your faith is what's going to get you through this season. It really is. But it's not enough to know it. We need to believe it, y'all. We got to believe it. And I wanted to touch one more time on suffering and what we're going through. First Peter 5.10. Peter helps us out. First Peter 5.10 says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. 
And basically, he's letting you know that our suffering is not in vain. There's a reason why we're suffering. You go back to 4.19, it says, Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to Him in doing good as to a faithful Creator. So we have to understand when we suffer, that, that comes with the territory. But the key of it that we have to realize, am I suffering for being a child of God or am I suffering for being disobedient? We're still in the Sunday school lesson. The children of Israel were suffering because they were disobedient to God. The pagan kings had gave them the green light to go back to their homeland and build the temple. They gave them the supplies for it. The suffering that we read about in this morning's Sunday school lesson, the, the, the lack of crops <clears throat> in verse 11 of verse 10 when it says, Therefore the heaven you, uh, over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. Verse 11, And I call for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of your hands. Their lack, their suffering, was because of disobedience. Today, we got to take a look at it. Why am I suffering? You don't have to look to the right or the left. Be real with yourself. Why am I suffering? And take a long, hard, realistic look. Because I'm sure if we do, and I know when I do, that when I get to peeling back the layers, it comes back to a wrong decision on my part. Right. Yes, man. All the devil did was capitalize That's it. on my decision. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't make me do it. It was my choice. Yeah. Yeah. And as a result, it just spun out of control. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Get his word. Mm -hmm. Get his word. You can know God. Because just reading his word, you're, you're, you know, you know that, that, that's, that's a mistake for a lot of people. A lot of people know the Bible. Quote it better than me. But you can't get any living. You know, you never use it in your life. Amen. Amen, Amen Charlie. Amen. And that's so true, Brother Charlie. And I'm going to go ahead and. <clears throat> Put something along with it. The devil knows the Bible. <laughs> Why do you think he's so busy doing what he's doing? He know God's faith. You got to remember, he was a high-ranking official in heaven. Yes, he he has seen what we longed for. Yeah. Yeah. And he know if we get it in our mind and in our hearts to be obedient to God, he knows what he done lost. Yeah. Have you ever dealt with somebody in your life that's lost so much, but at the same time they're so negative about seeing you moving forward? Yeah. They had it one at one point in time. Yeah. But because of circumstances and choices, they end up losing, but they're just so negative and don't want to see you or nobody else move into um their blessings and so forth. That's the same way the devil is. He knows. They'll be rejoicing with the ones that are prospering. Bro, teach them. Paul to pull them down. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know what I found out in the church um, with us Christians? What angers us Christians the most mm -hmm. our blessings is when we see somebody in the church mm -hmm. moving to the exact same thing that God was showing you you're supposed to be doing. And you move another person right into it. I think that the devil uses that more on us in the church than anything. You know you want that position, but you didn't do anything to require or, or, or faithful enough to get the position. But when God moves somebody else in that position, then the devil comes talking to you, telling you, yeah, yeah, you know, go to me. You know? <laughs> and that part ain't a lie. <laughs> it should have been you. Yeah. But you chose so not to do it. Right. But why get angry? That's, that, that's the thing that God told yeah. the devil. God shows you what you can do, your abilities, know what you can do. He'll show you your blessings. Mm -hmm. Know your talents, your gifts you got, but then when you suppress them or sit on them, somebody move in, 
That, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of times he doesn't even show us. He just and, and Isaiah, who shall I send? Mm-hmm. Send me. That's right. That's right. That's right. He that that was early on in Isaiah. That, that's the thing. A lot of times God's not even going to show us, but He's asking for our availability, not our ability. Amen. Yeah. I didn't want to preach. I didn't. I seen the struggles of a pastor firsthand in my grandfather and my uncles and cousins. I didn't want no parts of it. I didn't. And I struggled with that. But God let me know the more I tried to fight and I was studying it, He let me know what He had for me was for me and quit trying to compare mm-hmm. what hasn't yeah. even happened yet yeah. right. right. to what I've seen growing up. Yeah. But it, it took time, y'all. But the best thing I could have done was surrender to Him Amen. and accept His calling on my life. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, it's been mind, mind blown. There's such a peace. Yeah. Yeah. And even when hell is going on yeah. in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I know God has. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. You know, uh, Mike, like me, all the stuff I do for this church right here, doing it, it doesn't phase me to, to do it because, you know, a lot of people say, man, you get a church all the time. But listen, you don't know my story. That's right. You don't know what God has done for me. I lost everything. Not some things, I lost everything. But God gave it back to me. But He didn't give it back to me all at one time. He gave me a little bit of time. First, He gave me my job back. He got me my wife. He and my wife got back better than we ever did in our life. Mm -hmm. And you know, the things just keep going, going, and going. Because. I said, God, if you get me out of this mess, I'm going to be with you for the rest Amen. of my life. Amen. I don't work with nobody. I can't speak with nobody else what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, I love, I love them and everything. Yeah. But what I'm doing, I'm doing it to father this kingdom of God. Amen. If I can help in the kingdom, I'm going to help in the kingdom. Amen. Regardless of what it is. Amen. And you know, um, with the Sunday school lesson, um, We'll, we'll go back to the um, with the New Testament scripture, but I want to go back because there's a couple of things that they did that we need to make sure we don't do. <coughs> we take for granted the time God gives us in the 24-hour period. Mm. Mm. Like it ain't no hurt. <laughs> I get to it when I get to it. If we only understand how precious time is, mm-hmm. we would do so much more with our lives. And it ain't so much big things as doing little things little, little stuff. on a consistent basis. So when the big stuff comes, it ain't nothing to it. Why? Because I've been in practice. This year's thing, what is it? Practice. practice. So it's easier to practice and apply it on a daily basis. I'm just doing it. Somebody asked for food. Mm-mm. I ain't going to feed into that. Little things. You know what I mean? Something happens at the job. Don't panic. Mm-hmm. Same God who protects you five or ten years ago, going to protect you right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just keep on doing it. So I, I, I want to take a look at something, and this, this commentator brought out some good stuff. So we talked about it first. Three things that the children of Israel did. And first is the incessant excuses. And we talked about this. The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built was the defense for that inactivity. So you mean to tell me, even though he told you to rebuild the temple, y'all figured out he was wrong. (laughs) And it ain't time. It ain't time. (laughs) Second thing, they ignored the evidence. What more evidence did the Jewish people need that God's time had come? How could they doubt that it was... God's will for them to rebuild the temple and restore true worship in Jerusalem. Hadn't God moved Cyrus the three um, to free the exiles and commission them to return to Jerusalem for that very purpose? The only reason they, they stuff flowed the way it did, it pointed to rebuild my temple. When God saves us, 
and places His Holy Spirit inside of us, He only saves you to do His will. Amen. Not to play catch up for all the years you was acting a fool. <laughs> to do His will. His will. And remember what our number one priority is to seek the kingdom of God first and right. His righteousness. Right. Then all that other stuff will be added to you. Right. And that's the blessing of, of, of being a child of this gracious God. He didn't say I was going to leave you without nothing. But He did ask us to, and command us to seek Him first. Yeah. And he's dead. Yeah. He's dead. Right. You want your hands to meet? Start seeking God first. Right. You want some peace in your home? Start Seeking God first. Amen. That's the number one priority. Lord, what is it that you'll have me to do? And some of it, all you got to do is crack open his word, study it, and then apply it. Yes, sir. I, I, I said somebody one time I said I was looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> they said, uh, what you what you talking about? What you talking about? I said, uh, God is love. And if you love God, you can't help from loving people. Yes. And I said, when you're looking for love and, and, and material things and, and, and this, uh, 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 bless that thing, you know, uh, like, uh, companionship, mm -hmm. you know. Now, love, if you, if you love God, you're going to love your companion. Mm -hmm. Because why? God has commitment. Loving God is the key to loving anyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And and here's the thing. This is what I found personally, and I believe it's true for all of us. Once again, God has His version of love. The world has its version yeah. of love. Yeah. So first we need to learn what exactly is God's version of love. Then we apply it and show it. And therefore, then little Chuck and them will know what true love is. Because right now the world says true love at this way. That's right. It's physical. Minus marriage. Minus commitment. Amen. See, the world, that's the problem. The world's version of love is being blasted. If you see these signs that say love is love and this is that, they're not talking about biblical love. That's where we have to stand up. The true love of God was embodied in Jesus Christ. He did not come to be served. He came to serve us. But everything about our society today is we want to be served. Yes, yes, yes. That's a contradiction. And, and you think about all these conveniences that we enjoy. It's feeding into that man mentality. Yes, right. And a lot of times subconsciously, they got it so you ain't even got to come out of your house for nothing. You got this? You get anything you want. Yes, it. I was laughing out I listened to Pandora one day and they talked about a door dash for liquor. Remember when you used to make a liquor store run? Yeah. You ain't got to do that. You got that one. Convenience. Everything's convenience. And see, we We've allowed the world to shape our thinking and we bring that into the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Even though we're set apart to serve, yeah. Yeah. this goal, this is still lining up with the Sunday school lesson. Yes, You're supposed to serve God. Yeah. But they chose to put his commands aside and serve themselves. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna lay the crib out. Yeah. I'm gonna lay it out. Yeah. And we'll get to the we'll get to the temple when we get to it. Right now we're gonna lay the crib out there. Put a dish on the back, you know, all it. All this different stuff we do. And then you think about today. What have we been putting off that God has commanded us to do? That's 
crazy. We sitting here trying to figure out why things ain't working right. Mm. It's should, my house. Yeah, at my house. I'm being disobedient. I done did everything I wanted to do. Then I come up in the house of God. Strut. <laughs> yes, sir. Strut. Music playing in the back. I'm <laughs> back you guys. And I ain't did nothing that the Lord has commanded me to do. Nothing. This is a very sobering, and it's one of those don't look at nobody else, look besides yourself. Yeah. Right. Right. God, He's given us His best in His Son, Jesus Christ. And He wants to bless you more. We keep ourselves enslaved in this disobedience, yes. this vicious cycle. Yeah. Yeah. We, we're celebrating freedom this week and independence. When actually, in the kingdom of God, we need to be celebrating interdependence. Because yeah. yeah. first of all, I need my God, and I need y'all. Yeah. To get through this life. Mm -hmm. But on the independence, I thought about it this morning. I'm grateful because I live in a country where I can worship God. Yeah. That's right. Whenever and however I want to. Yeah. According to the Word of God. That's the freedom I'm celebrating. Yeah. I yeah. thank God for it. The church has flourished at times in America, but then at times we've been stagnant because of these freedoms that's allowed us to get inconsistent. We think about it. God has gave him the marching orders for the church in Matthew 28. He told us to go, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. And teach them everything I command you. Then he let us know what a promise. I'll be with you. Always. Always. That's that presence we have with God. That's what we had. And, and, and with the Sunday school lesson, they had to go to the temple. But guess what now? We're the temple. And all these little temples are supposed to work together to build up the entire body. We got it so much available to us. But where's our understanding of what we have? Where's our understanding? And we're, we're, we're talking about faith. Look at Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11. And we'll get back to some of these scriptures in the New Testament and showing what we're supposed to be doing now. Hebrews 11. And we, we read this and heard many sermons on it. But I, one that really caught my attention early on in the book, and, I, I, and this is telling me a couple of different things. Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Does everybody remember what's our number one priority? Seeking Him. Seeking Him. We talked about that in Matthew 6, 33. Now here the writer in Hebrews is, is, is reaffirming that. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That's what we're supposed to do. And, and we have the help. We have the help. We, and the reason why we have the help, Paul, Paul, we have Jesus' example. We have the Word of God. But also we have something that is so precious to us. In verse um, in Ephesians 1, verse 13, it says, In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Y'all, we have something. We're sealed. That's that blessed assurance we sing about. That's that guarantee. That's their receipt. You make a big purchase. What do you do? You hold on to your receipt. Hey, Amen? Right. That way if something goes wrong, what? You can get it right. Well, guess what? We're sealed with the Holy Spirit. That is your guarantee that you are a child of God. Well, Paul admonishes us also. First, 
uh, Thessalonians 5, 19, that we don't quench the power of the Holy Spirit. And then he tells us in Ephesians, we have to be careful that we don't breathe the Holy Spirit either. See, these are things we have to keep in mind. And God has them for us right here in the Word of God, but we have to study them and apply them. If you want to break this vicious cycle, if you want your ends to meet, there's some stuff we need to be doing on a daily basis. Many of us have quenched the power of the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. with our disobedience. And He is grieved. Why? Because He's showing us what to do in His Word through circumstances. Others are ministering to us. And what do we do? We do the same thing that children of Israel did in the book of Haggai. We take care of self first. Mm -hmm. And this power that Paul said we have in earthen vessels is laying dormant. And it's our choice. <clears throat> These are the things that we need to take a look at. That consider your ways. We need to consider our ways. God is allowing these things to happen right now. COVID's hovering over the world. They are pushing certain rights using all these homosexual rights. You know how they're pushing these laws, get them on the book? They're piggybacking on civil rights laws. They took laws that we men and women died for for certain freedoms to let sin run rampant. And it ain't but a small portion. It ain't but a small portion. At one point it was only like 4 or 6 percent. But they got organized. They did their studying. And then they put it to work. Imagine if we got organized. We turned this world upside down. They did it with 12 men back in the day. Imagine if the body, those of us who do believe, if we got together and got organized. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just had that conversation with my grandson. Um, he spoke on that um, and it's that's in the lesson time. The children of Israel let God's house stay waste because they, they weren't in no hurry because they didn't understand the concept of time. That's something we should teach we should be applying in our lives and teaching the younger generations. Time is precious. Precious. Yes it is. It's precious. Even when it comes to our finances, I read a good article and it was talking about Warren Buffett. And it talked about how he understood at a young age about compound interest. You want to teach your kids about finance? Teach them about compound interest. And how if they put a little bit of it over time, what will happen? Same thing with their health. Listen to me, young men. You like the way you look in the mirror, you got the cuts and all that? Take care of it. Because over time, you can't get it back. Watch what you, be mindful of what you put in your body. Because over time, watch, think about what type of music you listen to. Because over time, all these different things, you have to understand how time works. Yes. In our youth, we don't grasp the blessing of 24 hours. 
But when you get on the other side of 40, you start should have, could have, wouldn't. When you think about that young man and the young girl who you think you want to sleep with, don't do it. Save yourself. So on that wedding night, when it's just you and her, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's God's intent. Yeah. And you won't drag all your other partners in the room with you. Yeah. When it comes to homosexuality, right. and see, this is the problem, with, and, and, and it, it is an abomination. Yeah. It's a stench in God's nose, but it's also a forgivable sin. That's right. That's right. Yes, we got to start showing them how to come out of it. That's it. Don't be damn I understand you've been tampered with, you've been molested, you've been raped. And a lot of people use that as a crux. I also people are saying I was born that way, but some people were tampered with. And they chose to feed into that. Amen. Now you know how you feel about being tampered with. Don't continue to indulge in that lifestyle. Yeah. Get help. Yeah. See, we got to give them an alternative. With condemnation comes grace. Amen. The only unforgivable sin is blasphemy. There's a chance. But we got to have these hard conversations. Everybody's in an uproar about abortions. Start back preaching and teaching abstinence. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's then you don't have to worry about yeah. getting an abortion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the ones who are raped, there should be certain provisions for them. Yeah. But if we get back to preaching and teaching about abstinence, there won't be so many lives lost in abortion clinic. Yeah. See, these are the things that are taboo that we stop talking about. Yes. Yeah. It's time for us to get back to the basics. And here's the thing. Not everybody's going to believe it. Mm -hmm. The Sermon on the Mount told us that there's a narrow path and a broad path. A few's going to go the narrow. Many are going to go the broad. Yes. But just as in today's Sunday school lesson, Haggai was preaching to a remnant. That means a smaller group. And that's who Jesus Christ is coming back for. He's coming back for his remnant. And that is the church. Yes. And that don't mean we pick and choose who we preach and teach to. We minister to everybody. But if it falls on dead ears, you don't get upset. You keep on preaching and teaching. One plants, one waters, but it's God who gives the increase. And young children, don't cut us off. Sit back and listen. I remember when I was your age sitting in church. And I was in church all day long. Growing up in the preacher's house, we opened it, closed it, seven days a week, all that. But I tell you what, once I start applying it, it's been a beautiful thing, y'all. God has given you some great young men. I'm looking at you, young women. I'm looking at you. And don't get so caught up on what the older folks don't do. Everybody got a choice in this. Listen to their message. And it's going to be a struggle because they might say one thing and do something else. But if you just hold on to that word of God, they tell you, you got to see you through. Any questions or comments? My teacher, yeah. One, let me say on um, what you just said to the young folks. <clears throat> one of the best pieces of advice that I got was when I was uh, let me say mm -hmm. one of the best pieces of advice that I got was when I used to work with a guy who was a, a brick mason. And he, he used to call me super sport. He said, let me tell you something, super sport. If somebody said, let me tell you something, said you listen anyhow. And he said, then you determine whether it'll work for you or not. But you listen to him. Yeah, they, even if it's somebody they call a fool. Mm -hmm. He said, let me tell you something for your own good listen. listen. Right. Young right. folks, turn y'all turn deaf ears. Yes. But you need to listen. Because you're going to be like my son. I talk them way. And now they come back and tell me. They see. Everything that I told them, they understand now what I was saying to them. So don't turn off 
the people who've been down the road. Right. And listen to those people who are walking along with you. Because the one that's walking along with you, he don't know no more than you know. But the one that's coming back from up the road, that's us over. for. We coming back up the road. We know what's down the road. So when we tell you what's up there, you need to listen. And it'll help you not to make some mistakes in life. That one piece of advice that I got from that guy when I was a teenager. Super poor. If somebody, if he, that people call him a fool, said, let me tell you something for your own good. He said, at least listen. And the church said. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I know that you were blessed. Let's give our team here another round of Great teaching, great teaching, great teaching. And I'll just say one statement. There is a direct relationship between the conditions of your life and your relationship with God. There's a direct correlation. So therefore, having having a good life is just a result of having your spiritual priorities in mind. Think about that. The next time things are going haywire. Or you don't understand why things aren't going the way you want. There is a relationship between the two. Amen. Amen. We had a great turnout. We had 61 people uh, attend Sunday school this morning. And we collected $54.31. So thank you all. <laughs> Actually, our next Sunday school funding will be July 31st. Same time, 8.30 to 10.30 a.m. If you would like to donate some snacks or whatnot to the Sunday School Monday, feel free to do so. You can see any of the Sunday School teachers or myself. Thank you very much. Now on the hands of the people. Hey, Amen. Thou madest 
him and have do dominion over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the path of the sea. O Lord, our God, our Lord, how excellent is thou name in all the earth. And God's word is already blessed. Shall we pray? Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, yes, Lord. be thy name, thy kingdom come. Yes. We thy humble servant come before thee one more time. One more yes. time. Give me thy humble obedience, thank you, Lord. Yes. We come, Heavenly Father. We thank you for bringing us out to the house of prayer one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Nothing we've done to deserve it. By your grace and your gentle mercy, you spare us one more time. One more time. We come in the name of Jesus. Jesus, my rock, my soul, my sheep. Jesus, my wheel in the middle of the wheel. Jesus, my little other back. Jesus, Jesus, he's the bright and morning sky. Jesus, Jesus, he's the strength of the heart. Our excellence is his name. Father, as we say, my heavenly Father, we pray that thou bless Terry Jesso. Stand up for his name. We know you're able. You made us and you know us all about us. Joining us in our morning devotion, you are now in the hands of our choir. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning. Oh, good morning. I see people, so I know I can hear people. Good morning. Good morning. It's, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. So I greet you. So I greet you. I feel like I'm at home, and I'm just going to do what I do when I'm at home. Amen. So we just going to have a little a good time in the Lord's going to have praise and worship this morning. And to those of you watching virtually, we greet you this morning. Praise God for you. Thank God for you as well. How many of you know that victory can be yours? Victory is yours right now today. You should know that because you woke up this morning and you had victory over death and the grave. Amen. So you want to put your hands together for Jesus right
know we serve a mighty good God. And as we serve a mighty good God, he has a great name. There are a lot of wonderful names in the city of Rockford. We got one great name walking in the door right now. We've got a lot of great names. A lot of wonderful names. Pastor Lewis Malone. Pastor, Pastor Jones. Those are some great names. But I tell you, there's a name that's a little bit sweeter than their names. There's a name a little bit higher than their names. And we're going to talk about the great name of Jesus. Is that all right? If we talk about his great name, because we love to call on that name. Anybody ever had to call on him? Anybody been sitting in the courtroom? You know in the courtroom they tell you to turn off your phone, silence your phone. You'll be in contempt of court if you keep your phone on and they hear it ring, right? But every now and then, you just have to be able to whisper in your spirit that great name. Because let me tell you something. I'm a living witness that he will hear you when you call. And not to be cliche, but he will catch you when you fall. So, I want to call on the great name of Jesus. Is that all right? And, and just in case you might be here, you may be listening, and you don't know how to call, they're going to help me. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna set the atmosphere in the room where everybody can call on that great name. All right? your name is something we cannot explain that happens when we proclaim your great name your
appeared on that appeared on this after the setting of the sun. Now, if you all live, that live in the city hadn't seen the star, drive out where there are no street lights. That's right. Look up into the sky at night and look at the beauty of the stars in the sky. I know some folks have never taken time, but David was a shepherd standing on the side of the heat. The Judean hill that night, and he could see all of this, the beauty of God in the stars. You know, God has you know God has revealed Himself to us through His creation. His work stirs His work stirs our spirit to seek Him and to exalt His wisdom and His power. We stare into when we stare into the stars at night, we, uh, observe, at night. we observe God's handiwork. We are blessed to live, we are blessed to live in a time as Daniel prophesied that the human knowledge of the mysteries of God's creation would be increased. Now you got to tell us, now you got to tell us, folks, that you can look up at the stars with man has discovered so many millions and trillions of planets out there. But the discoveries of modern science are not necessarily to realize the two great truths that bog David's mind. David saw the majestic, David saw the majestic glory of God who has sculptured the sky. And he, and he uh, saw the unaccountable fact that he would care for us. Out of all that he has made, he still cares for us. David began the song, David began by, the song by magnifying the exalted name of the Lord. In Old Testament, in Old Testament time, names represented something. Yes, sir. Matter of fact, they represented your character. Names were carefully, names were carefully selected, and they were often changed. Even in even in Adderhood, when a person's life, when a person's life was not accurately reflected in the name. You had a good day. You had a good day and giving you a good name, but your name wasn't reflecting your character. Your character would change your name. One of the ways God One of the ways God had revealed himself is through his name. David explained David explained that the name of the Lord was excellent and majestic. That word really means that word wide, really means a wide, a large, a broad. He said, "A Lord." He said, "A Lord." Uh, when, he said, I, uh, he, when he said, "Oh Lord," he's talking about Jehovah, Yahweh, Yahweh. When he said, "I will Lord," when he said, "I will Lord," he's talking about Adonai. And this name really means, and this name really means a ruler. It emphasizes, God. it emphasizes God's ownership of His sovereign authority over us. All who trust, all who trust, truly know and acknowledge God as as a Adonai and serve Him and serve Him and obey Him. I was listening to I was listening to uh, Reverend Williams that he was expounding on the Sunday school lesson. He was saying, you can't just say you know God. You got to follow God. You got to obey God. God has given us these rules and these rules, but we got to learn how to obey God if we want God to help us. We live under His, we live ownership. Under his ownership and His authority. And in return, and in return, He protects, he protects and then provides for us. People want God to provide for them and they don't want to obey Him. Come on now. We just disobey. We do what we want to do until we get in trouble. And then when we get in trouble, we want to call on the Lord. Lord, help me. You need to be hollering, Lord, help me before you get in trouble. He will. He provides and He protects us. As the master of his creation, the name of the Lord is excellent and majestic in every corner of the earth. Although the heathen nations of the world uh, did not and still may not know his name, the Yahweh or the Jehovah, the creation uh, that has followed his order, that reveals his beauty. 
nature, our general revelation, the revelation of God through His creation, extends to every individual. Every person. Every person since within His or her heart that there is a God who created the universe and the master of it. There are no, there are no real atheists. Uh, uh, no. Uh, 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 Multitude ignore, deny the voice, but it does not change the fact that every individual senses that there is a God. And God longs for all people to know Him, that He, Yahweh, is the only true and living God who is the most high above all. David said, His glory. Means, means that the shining brilliance of his character cannot be, cannot be contained by creation. His glory, his glory extends the height of creation. The heavens and the earth can only partially express his excellence because the creator remains far greater than what he creates. He also teaches that above everything that is that you can see, above the created heaven and the earth, is the glory of the throne of God. He sets above that creation. The glory of His throne. God's glory is seen in the creation. But it flows from the throne, which set above the heavens. It is there. It is there at the throne of God where the glory and the holiness of God is prayed by the angels continuously. The strength is seen in his choice of who he chooses to show his glory through. He has chosen to respond to his enemies through the praise of children. Come on now. See, you always want to fight your enemy. Yeah. God just wants to show them. You, you want to show your enemy just how strong you are. Yeah. Look what God did. God took the praise of children. Yeah. When God seeks the sign of his foe, he doesn't, always, he doesn't always turn to the educated, deep thinking theologian to explain the deep truth of his spirit. Right. Right. It is not necessary for God to turn to the train. Bible to lead the scientists to skillfully refute the cross cause claim of his unbelieving world. God sometimes to be his critics with the social praise of children who are not yet old enough to reject the revelation that God has placed in their young hearts. We have got too grown. You <laughs> <laughs> got too many grown folks. <laughs> Not no children in the church. <laughs> got to get some children yeah. in the church. Jesus cited, Jesus cited isn't that this now? Jesus cited this verse when the Pharisee protested the praise of the children in the church. In Matthew chapter twenty one. Verses 15 and 16, it says, And when the, feet, when the chief priest and the scribes saw the wonderful thing that he had did, and the children crying, sent the children and saying, Hosanna to the son of David. They were so displeased and said unto him, Hear us out, will they say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye not read? Out of the mouth of babes and suffering, thou hast perfected praise. See, praise got to come from your heart. Say it again. See, children are pure. They're innocent. 
right. Now you, and you. Come on, man. If you love me and you think you're true. <laughs> We must become like children before we can enter the kingdom of God. See, you 
Yeah. See, you got to, you got to get out of this human, human. I'm my own, me myself. You got to get back down to a childlike person in the kingdom of God if you're gonna get into the kingdom of heaven. Yes, come on. Humble and ever ready to learn from the world around us. When we look at creation and receive the light of God, that through His creation, God will give us more light. See, how many of you, when you first started out as a child, and you grew, you grew, and you learned? Well, when you came into the church as a child, you thought you grew, you had a little knowledge of God when you came in. And now you kept, he kept enlightening you. He keep on enlightening you. Listen, I've been in the same, I've been in the same, I don't know how many years as a, as a preacher. I'm 40, 45 years as a preacher. I'm still learning. I'm getting more insight. Every day I look at the word, I get more insight. We gotta learn to grow in this thing. Like, like, like we should be growing from, uh, from this. Yeah. That we see around us. Get more light every day. Come on. Somehow, in some way, he will send the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ to us so that we might believe in him. Yes. And when we humble ourselves as child might say and believe in God, so then we will have eternity with him in heaven one day. Come on now. I heard Brother William talking about the broad way and the narrow way. Uh, you know what hurts me when I read that one passage of the scripture that says there is a way that leads to destruction, a wide, broad in that way, and many be that travel. But then it says there's a narrow way that leads to eternal life, and this that you few be that find them. Of the fingers 
of God. Yeah. Yeah. It has something to do with the fingers. It said of God. Now, when you look at this, think about it. So things stick out. First of all, the setting of the star is placed by God's fingers. This is what ripped the heart of David. His words painted a vivid image. Each of the heavenly bodies is grasped like a ball in the clutch of God's hand and then purposely placed in the precise spot that he chooses. And he chose to do. Ordained. Ordained. You're talking, here you're talking about setting in place. Today we know that God has created all matters and energy and the law that causes both to interact and bring the stars and the planets together. In his infinite knowledge and wisdom, he has ordained or set in place the trillions of stars and planets that scatter throughout the universe. Don't think you the only somebody here. You got the earth, you got the only one. We're just a little snack. Out of all of the vast universe. People, people, listen. Now, people have said that God flung the stars into the sky. You know, preachers get excited when they get to preaching. And they, they flung the stars into the sky. Uh, I know some of y'all heard the preachers get excited. Remember, we were getting the pull in there. We get how many flung the stars in the sky. But, but, but that's not how it happened. That's not how it happened. Listen here. The, the, the Lord decorated the sky. Like a woman carrying a decoration on. Come on, God. Right. Say it again. Come on. The Lord decorates the sky like a woman carrying a decoration on. Yeah. Okay, now. And my wife said, I need something here. And she go out and she look around and she's like, I don't know what I need to put right here. She, she decorated. <laughs> and, and, and God decorated the sky like. A woman decorates her home. Each piece is orderly and properly placed according to his good flesh. Yes, sir. Like, a, like, an like, a, like an engineer carefully fixed together a piece of a complicated machine. Yes. The creator meticulously created the laws that position each star in space and uh, contributed to the operation of the whole universe. That's how he made it. Yes. Every part in you is designed to help the rest of the parts work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when every part, when every part is not working properly, some break down. Yeah. 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 Check engine. Second, second, second. Oh, oh, oh. The sculpture of the star of my God's fingers. Like a power like forming this place. <laughs> the Lord shape and molded the fact. The star and the meteorites. Imagine every, Imagine every crater. That we look at they just talk about there's two craters that just got filled. Something fell in the two craters. Just think about every one of these craters as the impressions of God's feet. Every crater is just in the fair tip of God. His creation. His creation. Fascinating. Fascinating. Ordained it. Really means to fashion. Really means to fashion a form. He fashioned and formed everything. Then thirdly, the, the simplicity of the task. Dr. J. Vernon uh, McGee, he said, it is interesting that when the word speaks of salvation, it refers to the bare arm of the Lord. Like I hear 53 and 1 said, who can believe that report?
to come to him and help him. Do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? What is man? That's what he said. What is man? That you would give that you would give him a thought. The vastness of this universe. The planets, the star trillion and billions of planets, the stars in the universe. Big. Big. Bigger than the earth. And, 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 and David said, then what is man? Is man? That you would even give him a thought? <laughs> Must have care, care enough about him to come to attack him. Now the word visit means really means to exercise oversight over a support. Even in the form of inspection or taking act action to cause a considerable change in the circumstances of the support. In other words, God comes down and changes things for you and so that you can have a better circumstance. <laughs> Out of the vastness of his universe, he still looked down on you. Yeah. And make sure you were getting along sure fine. Uh -huh. yeah, that's what you know. Make sure things are working out for you. Got your back. Got your back. I got your back. Yeah. 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 What, David could see. what David could see with his naked eye was enough to stir him to rejoice over God's help. Today, when we know uh, know so much more about this universe, how much more overwhelmed should we be when we look up into the heaven and give it off to us that God cares about us? Yes, yes. Think about this. Think about this. He cares about you. He cares about you out of all of the things that He made. We are less than a tiny dot on the face of the universe. In proportion in God's vast creation, every one of us is smaller than a single grain of sand on the shore. But God loves us. Of all of His creation, we have been specifically selected to be the recipients of God's favor and His care. Of the trillions and the trillions of stars in the heavens. We are merely specks on the one star. Yet we have been singled out to know God and to be an object of His great, immeasurable love. Us! His people! Yes, sir. Listen, David question. It, 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 it's really in, in, to invoke us. This is this he, in order to help us understand our self worth, he questioned God, he questioned God by benefit. Many people struggle, Many people struggle with poor self image. Don't get that now. Write that now. Poor self image. <laughs> now, listen to this. The purpose of, his, of this song is to teach just how important you are to God. How valuable you are to Him. He, listen at He, listen at He planned a wonderful, a wonderful life for you. Every one of you. Every one of you. God planned a wonderful life for you. He carefully, listen, He carefully formed you according to His specification. Those physical attributes that so uh, that you so despise and would change if you could were carefully programmed into your DNA by a loving creator who delighted in your uniqueness. I ought to think about I ought to think about Michael Jackson. Wanted to look like Diana Ross. Did <laughs> <laughs> all that stuff. <laughs> he, he, he didn't realize this. He didn't realize that the physical attributes that he had and was so disturbed.
What is that? The rights of we are wonderfully. As you develop and flew before birth, those characteristics were sculptured by the finger of God. You are not just another copy that has been stamped by a common mold. Yeah. 
when they learn how to walk. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody, you just walk, walk behind them. Yeah. You're holding them up. Yeah. And, and, and then every, when they seem like they're getting it, but they got it down, you step back. You let them go on their own. That's what God does for you when you start growing. He steps back and he lets you grow. You might not know, but he's still there. Thank you. 
Good desire. Good desire. I don't know why we act the way we act. But also let God have done us that we still act the way we act. Pain is watching over us. We must accept this responsibility seriously. And, and I, I was listening to, to Reverend William when he was talking about uh, God's house. That's a responsibility. And he was saying that the people had gone home and sat down and didn't worry about God's house because they were, all they were concerned about was making sure they had in their house. You need to make sure you take care of God's house first. And once you take care of God's house first, he's going to take care of your house.
And Jesus will be in Lord of Lord and King of Kings. And one day, one day, that's going to happen. One day. I don't care what man think or what man say. Yes, sir. One day, one day, God's going to restore this earth. I don't, I don't argue, that's why I don't argue with the Jehovah Witness. When they say we're going to be living here on earth, like that might be true. But I do know one thing. What's that? God don't clean it up. Okay. Come on. It, 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 we might be living here on earth, but it's going to be cleaned up. And it's going to be restored to the glory that it had in the garden of man. Where it will be conducive for us to live forever. In an atmosphere of joy and peace. Yeah. That's why Jesus died. Yeah. So that we can have that. Yeah. That's why he went down, conquered hell, hell, and the grave, came back up, so that one day we can all live in peace. Oh, oh man. But you gotta be, you gotta get it right now. Yeah. So you can live in this kingdom forever. Yeah. We gotta magnify this magnificent name of the Lord. Yeah. We gotta stop being ashamed to let the world know that we belong yeah. to Him. We are his children. He cares for us. Think about you just a little speck. You a little speck out of all this vast universe. And he loves you. As a matter of fact, he loved you enough. That he came down to see about you. Let's remember. Look, we're living in a world where. They are fussing and fighting over killing babies. Yeah, that's it. They are fussing and fighting over letting people be who they are. Let them live the way they want to live. Men changing in, into women and women changing to men. Just on TV the other day, um, a man was dating this, what he thought was a girl. Then been changed over and looked just like a girl. And when he found out that it wasn't no girl, he killed it. He killed it because he's a man. And a man was looking for a woman. He wasn't looking for somebody who done changed and said they're a woman. And he killed the person. We're living in a fallen world. But one day Christ going to come and redeem it. Amen. You better get right, stay right. Because we don't know when the Lord's going to come. He's going to come like a thief in the night. And if the thief had known when the good master were coming, he would have been watching. So make sure that you're ready. Amen. Because he is coming back. He's coming back. God bless you. God keep your heaven smile upon you and give you peace. I hope that message sinks in. You're uniquely made. You're, and think about God crafted you. Placed into your DNA everything that he put in there. I watched them FBI's and, and Law and Orders and all of that. I like those movies, those, those TV shows. And every time they're looking for somebody, they try to find something that they can get a, a, some, a drop of sweat, the, the touching of their lips, their hands on anything and they can get the DNA. That's how unique you are out of all the people on this universe. God has put into you what he wanted to be in you. Amen? Amen. God bless you. God keep you having a smile upon you and give you peace. Listen, if you didn't realize that you were uniquely made by God God had shaped you the way be what he wanted you to be. And you've been feeling different about yourself. Why don't you come on down and let us introduce you to Jesus. If we introduce you to Jesus, he will help you to understand 
that you are uniquely made. I made you to be who you are. And I love you the way you are. I died for you the way you are. So that I can redeem you from whatever you're going through. If you're here or if you listen out there, somebody out there might didn't realize that you were uniquely made by God to be who you are. And God loved you the way he made you. And he will receive you as his child right now. And if you need redeeming, you've got in your mind that you, and the world has got you going in a different way than God, he can redeem you right now. You can be redeemed. All you got to do is repent and return unto the Lord and he will turn on you. If you're here, or you out there, if you out there, you can pray this prayer right now. You can still see Jesus Christ by praying this prayer. Lord, forgive me for not realizing that you made me this unique way. I come to you, Father, to be received. I give myself to Jesus Christ. I want to receive him in my heart, in my mind, so that I can be redeemed from the bad things of my life that I've allowed to come into my life, that I've allowed to shape me into the person that I am today. Redeem me from that through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I give my heart to you. I receive Jesus as my Savior. Give me the Holy Spirit to help me so that I'll be able to hold out and stand for you. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, if you pray that, you can be renewed right now. I don't care. Listen, homosexuality is no greater sin than anything else. It just needs repentance and deliverance. It is possible for God to deliver you from anything. There's nothing greater. Listen, he's the creator. And there's nothing in his creation that the creator cannot change. And that's what you've got to remember. If you need some change in your life, the creator can change and deliver you. You out there, you out there, please type it into the, uh, your name, address, phone number, into the uh, Facebook page, and they will get that off of there, and we'll get in touch with you, and we'll help you to walk through your salvation. Amen. God bless you.
share this. Reverend Williams, I did it on Wednesday for those that was on the line. The Sunday school lesson. And Reverend Williams laid it out again this morning to you. If you are not tithing, listen to me. If you are not tithing, that means that God's money is mixed up in your money. And I'm going to show you what it says. Hey, I said, you think you done hid it, and you go home, and it's like putting it in a sack. Now watch this, with holes. It didn't say a hole, it said holes in it. The sack got holes in it. And that means it's not gonna hold anything. So you take your money, and when you don't give your give God what belongs to him, it's like putting the rest of your money in a sack with holes in it. Okay? And then, he said, you take it home and you think you done hid it from me. And he said, I blow on it. I blow on it. And you're wondering why you can't make ends meet. It's because God's money is mixed in with your money. You must separate God's money from your money. And when you do that, give God what belongs to him. Then God said, I will be with you. That's the promise of God. I will be with you. So don't, don't, don't put God's money in with your money. Pay God what belongs to him. Give, give that ten. And then give the offering. You gotta pay your tithe and give your offering. And then when you pay your tithe and give your offering, God blesses what you have left over. And if you don't believe it, you need to try it. Amen. You need to try it. Amen. So let's let's prepare to pay our tithe and give our offering. And watch. God work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verses and the deacons are coming. We are asking that those who are coming downstairs stay down for our communion. Thank you. We 
so grateful to you. We thank you that you blessed us with finances to take care of our homes and our families. And as Hagar said, you just asked us to consider our ways. Make sure your house is taken care of. Now we have come, Heavenly Father, to give back unto you a portion of what you blessed us with. Now we ask your blessings be upon it that it be multiplied. Take care of your house. And then, Father, let there be no void in our houses for have given it unto you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. First Sunday and we always remember what the Lord has done for us by way of Calvary, by the blood that was shed for us. And you remember Jesus said, as often as you do this, you show forth my death and my suffering until I come again. So we want to observe today what Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. As I was saying, the vastness of the universe and God still care for us. He cared for us so much that he sent his son to die for our sins and bring salvation to us. And we need to make certain that we remember that and we come to remember that today by scripture and prayer. I will be reading scripture concerning the Lord's Supper. 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, beginning at verse 23. And it reads as follows. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had took, given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup also after the supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord is unworthy, is it in an unworthy manner, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself, and in doing so, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of the word. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Father. This opportunity to take out all the things that we've done that is bad, that is displeasing to you. Let us remember that it is with your son, Jesus, who died on the cross, whose body was broken and mangled and blood poured down for our sins. Father, we thank you. Now as we partake of this, Father, remove all the thoughts from our minds and, and the things of our hearts as we partake of it. And these are many blessings in your son, Jesus Christ's name, and it's his name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus had let them know that he was going to I had that body, but I lost it. <laughs> Man, I, I I had it in my hand. Nice right <laughs> Amen. But that body, 
that was broken for you. Just imagine, I, I, you know, just like David was looking at the stars and he saw all that God had made. Uh, imagine your body being whipped until it's raw, your back is raw, where they beat you. Then they put a crown of thorns on your head and pressed it down. The crown was made of 72 thorns and they pressed them down upon his brow, into his brow. Think about if that was you, that somebody did that to. But Jesus did it for us so that we wouldn't have to. Then they nail, nail in his hands and in his feet. That body was broke there. That's that broken body he was saying that was gonna be broken for you. And then the blood that was coming from each one of these wounds. Each one of them dripping blood for you. And he said, as you remember what I did for you, as often as you remember that, what I did for you, think about it, the vastness of the universe. You are not as much as a speck of sand on the seashore, but he loved you so much that he gave his son to die for you so that you could have eternal life. And all he asked us to do is remember that. So that's why we, re we celebrate. This is that body that was broken for you. Let us eat. This is the blood that came from those wounds. Let us drink. Amen. They sang the hymn and they went out into the Mount of Olives. Let us prepare uh, to leave. I see Mike over there. He, Mike had a backyard barbecue. <laughs> I saw that on TV. Mike, had, Mike won that backyard cookout. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Congratulations, Mike. And let me share this again. I want to share with you all. I'm still, I'm still painting. Shingle pain stays a long time. And I'm going to tell you, it's a constant pain. And every once in a while, even though it's constant and going on, it feels like somebody still punched you every once in a while and then make you, if you see me move, that's why, because that pain surges. If your doctor asks you to get vaccinated for shingles, please get vaccinated. If your doctor say to you, get vaccinated for shingles, please get vaccinated. That's why Rodney is not here. Rodney had shingles. I don't know why it seemed like it's kicking up more and more now than ever before. It's kicking up. It's, it it seems like it is surfing, surfacing in more and more people every day. So let us make certain. Oh, announcement. We got some announcement. But that one announcement right there, get vaccinated. Do we have somebody with this? Oh, Sister, Sister Tanya Gilmore coming with the announcement. Amen.
No? There. Just two. To all ministry leaders, please see Deacon Parks at the end of service or call him at 815-977-0419. 815-977-0419. St. Luke will be fellowshipping with Greater Harvest Baptist Church at 2622 19th Street at 3 p.m. on Sunday, August 7th. Please govern yourselves accordingly. You know, laughter is good. If you don't, if you can't, this is God made us unique. And laughter is part of our makeup. And if you don't know how to laugh, uh, see Reverend Jones or Tyree, and they'll teach y'all how to laugh. Amen. <laughs> All right, God bless you. I love y'all. Keep praying for us, all of us who are sick. Praying for those that are traveling over the highway during this holiday. Keep them in prayer as well. Amen. Our God and our Father, we're grateful. Thank you for another day. Thank you for the brand new mercies that you gave us this day. Now we ask your blessings be upon us as we depart from this place, but never from your sight. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I'm going to get away from you all. I don't want to get close to you yet. <laughs>